Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hi, this is Dave Eisenstadter. I am the editor of the Valley Advocate. This is the Valley Advocate Podcast, a collaboration with Amherst Media, and I'm here with arts and culture editor Gina Beavers. Yes, and we are here with T.X. Watson, fourth year, well, last year student at Hampshire College, and T.X. is selling their soul. A purveyor of your soul, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I, we should just ask you, like, how you came up with the idea of selling your soul. I understand that it was something you've, ha- you've had for a while and you wanted to just do it this year. Yeah, I've had the idea for something relating to, um, you know, using souls as a currency or as, uh, like, material basis for a currency for a long time. Um, my original idea years ago was to try and write a short story about just like a little island nation that uh, backs their currency with souls the way the U.S. government used to back our currency with gold. Mm. Soul um, standard. <laughs> the soul standard. Um, and I've actually always kind of thought that would be a pretty good idea because you could, um, you know, assign a certain amount of like raw number to each soul and then just like give a person's whole soul to them on like their 18th birthday or something. Um, mm. And it'd be a really good way to like systematically uh, incorporate people into the economy. Mm. Um, Interesting. It's, it's not a foolproof proof plan, but. Uh, what is, though? <laughs> really, in the end. Yeah. It kind of <laughs> reminds me of like The Giver, the Lois Lowry book, where oh, they all right. like they get their job assigned to them when they're 12 or 13 right. or something, and then they mm. gosh, go really off wild. on their. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. I think I read right. that in middle school, but, um, or whatever. But, um, yeah, so I don't know. I like that. And, and, you know, we should say that you're selling your soul for a very specific reason. Mm-hmm. I am selling uh, 1,000 shares of ownership in my immortal soul. I love how uh, corporate this is. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best. Uh, the shares are $45 a piece, and if I sell all 1,000, it will completely wipe out my student debt, uh, as well as uh, some credit debt I've accumulated, um, you know, surviving in college and the uh, tax and production costs for the certificates themselves. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And go ahead. I was just wondering, so, I mean, I mean, the obvious, ben- the, the benefit is obvious. You, you rid yourself of your debt. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the upside for the purchaser? So it's, um, I mean, really, literally, it's an investment. Um, you know, just like when you buy a stock, you're uh, buying a share of ownership on the faith that it will eventually be more valuable than it is now. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, you know, an artist just starting out my career. Uh, Getting your hands on one of my early limited edition prints would be a potentially really valuable asset. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I expect shares in my soul to appreciate value over time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that. okay, so that's the, like, physical object, the, um, you know, the print. But, like, I, I mean, like... Do you feel at all uneasy about giving your soul away? I mean, your immortal soul to a thousand other people or, or however many people buy these things? Um, well, I'm personally not religious, so um, my concerns about this are sort of background, maybe I'm wrong concerns, uh, not like first order, this is a consequence I'm expecting. But um, I was fairly careful in the fine print um, so uh, purchasing a share in my soul does entitle you to ownership over that share. Um, the the um, the fine print is very clear about the fact that anything that remotely resembles a soul existing constitutes the thing that is being sold. Um, so I'm not wiggling out of it that way. But uh, it does also say that destruction or radical transmutation of the certificate constitutes the remit of the soul to me. Mm. Um, so you could get it back. So worst case scenario, I just have to wait till the sun explodes. Okay, yes. And then your okay. soul is free to, to do whatever souls do. Right. Assuming that I need all thousand shares consolidated under a single owner in order for my soul to, you know, move beyond. Mm. Because, I mean, as with corporations, it's perfectly easy to own a share in something and not actually possess that 
fraction of the thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you buy a share in a company, it's not like seven of the employees start showing up to your house and working from there. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, I would. I would probably buy more stocks right? if I thought Absolutely. I would get more employees. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, we talked about this actually before when we were talking for the um, the the um, article about about this uh, is kind of the idea of corporations as uh, individuals. You know that like you know corporations are people too. Are people too. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I I just like you to talk about that a little bit and your kind of your thoughts behind that. Yeah, so the idea that uh, corporations are people is um, embraced among certain uh, subsets of the political right, mostly rejected on the left. And I think that that's a problem because I think that uh, corporations meaningfully act as agents in the world in a way that can't be adequately reduced to the behavior of the behavior or the intentions of any individual or individual group within that corporation. Um, you know, uh, it's possible for, say, Amazon to do things as a company that Jeff Bezos would never decide to do mm. because corporations have uh, elaborate mechanics for decision making, most of which are out of the hands of anyone with any particular power certainly all of which are distributed so that no one person has access to all of them and but, and, but like do you but do you think that like the idea that uh, corporations as people like has, is this like a problematic issue that we're facing now or is this something that is like more appropriate for um, you know just like this is the direction that we're living in a modern world I think it's something the left should accept as true mm -hmm. uh, I do think it is dangerous, but I think the fact that there are these weird alien things in control of our society uh, being scary is not a good reason to dismiss it. Um, so I have a question about your future. Um, so let's say that I and a thousand people buy your soul and you get to become a, uh, a successful artist. Debt-free uh, de artist. A debt-free artist. <laughs> important. Um, uh, you know what? Are, what are you going to be doing in ten years? Like, what's your? You know, what? What are your your artistic uh, ambitions? Like, what are? What are we going to see you uh, doing? Do you think, or do you hope? Well, that depends on a lot of um, unforeseeable variables. I think, at this point in human history, it's kind of silly to think ten years in advance. Mm. Um, well, how about in your perfect world? <laughs> <laughs> in my perfect world, capitalism will have ended ten years from now, and you'll all Row, be uh, much better off. Uh, than you hypothetically might have been for any benefit from buying my soul. Oh, yes. Okay, so in this 10 years from now, uh, capitalism-free world, like, how do we do what we do? Yeah. Um, well, there are lots of uh, speculative models for what a post-capitalist world would look like. Um, like I said, I don't like the idea of predicting the future. Um, Personally, I think that what we really need to do is uh, cultivate a lot of small efforts to experiment with different models for post-capitalist civilization building. Um, and I think we should stick with the ones that work. And I don't know which ones those will be. Mm. Okay, unknown for now. How do, we, how do we buy your soul? Where do we get it? Uh, if you go to www.txwatson.com slash my dash soul, uh, you can buy the soul there for uh, forty-five dollars plus shipping. Shipping is a little steep because it's art shipping, mm -hmm. um, but there's also an option to uh, pick it up in person. Which, if you live in the valley, I can arrange to you know meet you. And you've got your your uh, your own show right in April. Is that right at Hampshire? Yes, uh, April eighth through eleventh. Uh, I have a gallery show in the uh, Hampshire Gallery. All right, cool. great. All right. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to know, I haven't uh, fortunately seen your art. What kind of, what, what inspires you? Um, well, I'm a big uh, believer in political art. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, there's this quote um, from George Orwell in his essay, Why I Write, um, where he wrote that um, everything that he's written in the past 10 years or so, um, he has written for democratic socialism and against fascism as he understands it. Um, and he goes on to talk about the idea that um, 
it's impossible not to write about politics, uh, and I think it's impossible not to make art about politics. And so doing so intentionally and starting from that position puts you in the best possible position to then explore those ideas in a way that is not artistically bankrupt. Mm. Um, I think um, the aesthetics, uh, while they are important, while I really enjoy them, uh, they can't come first. They have to be informed by what the intention of the project is. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to come to your show. <laughs> I got to see this. Yeah. This is a must. Yeah. This is definitely. a must. Well, thank you so much, TX. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for having me. We wish you the best in selling your soul. Yeah, right. It's like, <laughs> do we wish you the best? I, I don't know. know. Well, we'll if, wish if you the best. If it's your desire, we wish you the best yeah. to sell your soul. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Thank you.